Hello everybody, it's Grant Chap. Welcome. Um, it's just gone past um, the hour we wanted to start on. I'd like to introduce you to my colleagues from Motorola. I've got David Johnson and Fraser Hutchinson. They will be doing this webinar on our behalf um, on the Wave PTX product. Guys, I think you're going to get a lot of traction out of this and David and Fraser are the real premier lads to bring this to you. They are the experts on it and with no further ado, I'll hand it over to you, David, and uh, we'll chat to you guys as we go. Thanks for that uh, kind uh, introduction, Grant. Um, just a quick introduction. Um, David Johnson, I'm based in the Motorola Melbourne office, and I've got with me uh, Fraser Hutchinson. So we're the, uh, the, the two people in Motorola sort of focusing on the Wave PTX product, um, and we'll be going through that today. Um, we're using GoToMeeting for this presentation. Um, there is the option to type in a question in the, uh, the box and then we will uh, try to answer that and we will also throw it open to questions at the end of the presentation. The way it's structured today, we've got uh, some slides we go through what Wave PTX is and the, the software, the dispatcher, um, the radio integration and the devices. And then I'll hand over to Fraser who will be going through the uh, provisioning side of it, so the portal, how you'd set up a customer, add talk groups, and so on. So. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Okay, so just setting the context of where the WAVE uh, portfolio is, so Motorola Solutions have um, WAVE PTX commercial that we'll be talking about today. We also have a WAVE PTX government um, that is on the based in the secure Canberra data centres and we offer 24 by 7 level 1 and level 2 support by Australian uh, uh, NOC in, in uh, Melbourne. And then we have a sort of a new product that we're um, launching which is a, a Wave Light product um, which is a sort of cut down version to be designed on premise for sort of up to uh, minimum 200 users up to 3,000 users. So that's sort of the Wave portfolio that we have. Um, for the commercial market, really the focus is the Wave PTX that we'll be going through today. So what Wave PTX? It's a, a group communication service that connects teams at the push of a button across different networks and devices. So really it's our push to talk over cellular offering. Um, it, the history behind it is with, from a uh, company called uh, Kodiak and there is well over a million users actually using the Kodiak platform worldwide, sold through some carriers and also through the, the Motorola um, cloud-based service. And really the main sort of value propositions behind it, we're saying the, the coverage, capacity, the control, and also the cost and the capabilities of the service. And the, the ability to interconnect devices networks and location and let, let everyone be part of the conversation, the, the tagline behind that. So really we're saying it's radio communication on any device. So in this scenario here at the front office, they've got a tablet running the Wave PTX app. In the field, they might have a smartphone at the job site, a radio user, and in the control room we have a dispatch user running it on the desktop and we have communication across all these devices. And that, that's the beauty of the Wave PTX solution. It sort of seamlessly integrates into the Moto Turbo radio systems. Having a look at the, uh, the ability to turn the handset or your phone into a PTT handset, um, which gives you the speed and simplicity of radio communications on the phones your team already carries. So the Wave PTX mobile application, it's downloadable from the um, Google Play Store or the uh, iOS um, App Store. And you can see some screenshots on the right hand side, but the main things it does is the PTT communications, location services, real-time presence, text messaging, photo and video sharing, and also some voice messaging. So if you can't get access to a user, you can send them a voice message. In terms of the PTT communications, um, and the tagline here is that nothing is faster than PTT, we have the presence. 
So with the Wave PTX, you know the status of all the users. Are they um, available? Do not disturb. Are they online or offline? You can do group and private calls. You can have contact lists, favorite lists. It's soft PTT or hard PTT. And by soft PTT, and the, the picture on the right-hand side there, you see a, a microphone, that's a soft PTT button. A hard PTT would be a sort of device that's got a PTT button on the side or using an accessory that's got a uh, push to talk button on the side of it. And that's one thing we'd sort of like to uh, mention here is um, when we're selling this solution, we need to make sure that we're making it sort of a seamless experience for push to talk. So we would recommend either a purpose built device that has a PTT button or an accessory that enables you to to push the talk without having to um, open up your device and press the PTT button on it. Um, we can do background calling, call alerts, missed calls. Um, you also see all the communication history on the device. Um, and I also mentioned voice message fallback. Where sort of the wave PTX sort of starts to differentiate itself from radio is the messaging capabilities. So we can send text messaging like we can on a radio, but we can also send pictures, videos, audio, and file attachments. So if you've got a group of staff um, or a customer who has staff that go out um, and need to capture an incident or a, uh, um, a, a broken down vehicle, send a picture back to their team in the office, they can do that all from within the application. What we're also um, launched in the US and will be soon launching in Australia is the uh, ability to um, also stream live video out to an individual dispatcher or to a talk group as well. Um, with the messaging component, it's easy to read communication thread with timestamps. You can reply privately or reply to all or forward. It's stored and forward. Um, and you can send the messages and attachments to all of your devices and desktops. And by desktops, we mean dispatches. So it really um, enables you to enhance the collaboration by that extra messaging capability that you have with your smartphone devices. History, seeing the past communication threads. So um, you can see the past communication um, in one view and you can include groups and individuals and unread messages are indicated, so which ones you may need to respond to. Location and mapping is another differentiator compared to a standard radio system where on the device, the push to talk device, you can actually see the mapping and also view the location of the other Wave PTX users. At the moment, you can't view the location of the Moto Turbo radio users, but that will come in time. You can also share your location with an individual or a group. So if you wanted to um, drop a pin on the map um, or you share your location or even drop a pin and say, this is where I'm heading to, you can do that from within the app. You can find an address um, and then share that to other users, talk groups or individuals. In terms of the dispatch application, we have what we call Wave Dispatch. It's a secure internet login. It's a you just need a standard web browser, Chrome or Internet Explorer. There's no application to download or install, but it does install a plugin to those two supported browsers. Um, and there's no requirement for you to have to manage application updates because it's a cloud-based service that's automatically pushed and managed um, for you. So in terms of push to talk communications, um, we have in the top right, the call activity, sorry, top left, call activity window where you can see the uh, push to talk button, hang up button. Um, we have our contacts and talk groups below that where we can see the status of all the users, where they're on, online, whether they've got a location. You can uh, push to talk them, you can do a call alert, you can track them, or request their location, or you can send them messaging. And then we have the alerts and missed calls. So if you uh, sort of have a, a dispatch operations, the, the uh, dispatcher here can see all the calls that they haven't uh, responded back to. 
You can see the call logs. And we also have the ability to monitor up to eight different talk groups. An, ex an example of that is you could have a maintenance talk group and a security talk group. Your dispatcher could be monitoring both of those talk groups. You can also set priority levels within those talk groups. So say you're on um, listening to a maintenance call, if a security call keys up, if that's got a higher preference, the dispatcher will stop listening to the maintenance talk group and go across to the security talk group. So similar to what we'd refer to as receive talk groups or, or scan lists in, in the radio world. We saw the messaging from the radio side of it. Now this from the dispatcher side, we can see what it looks like here. We have our um, multimedia message thread here by going to the uh, messages tab in the dispatcher. And the dispatcher can also attach videos, photos, audios, or documents, or he can uh, um, download and archive those uh, those documents if they needed to be stored or added into another document as part of an incident management. You have the capability to do that as well. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the live streaming video will also be um, be able to show up in in the messaging component here as well. Location and mapping. So the dispatcher supports location information from the Wave PTX devices, be a, a TLK100 or a smartphone device or a tablet, anything that's got a GPS receiver in it and running the app. From the uh, dispatcher screen here, you can find an address or a point of interest. You can also do in-map communication. So if you're looking at a, a certain area and you see the devices there, you can just quickly um, click on the uh, device and then communicate with that with a message or a private call or, or you can even do things like request more frequent updates for location from that device. You can also change the selectable map views. So at the moment um, it's using uh, a Google um, standard street um, map there. You can change that to a, a satellite map or a hybrid view depending on what your preference is for mapping. One of the, uh, the, the big benefits of, of Wave PTX is really its integration into the Moto Turbo radio system. Um, and this uh, integration is done via a um, small gateway box that has a pure all sort of IP integration to the radio system and then back to the cloud-based servers. So there's no requirement to use any donor radios or control stations to integrate any of your Moto Turbo talk groups into the Wave PTX service. What we actually get over the gateway is um, talk group and user IDs. So you can see who is actually talking, um, which talk group. We can actually pass emergency triggers and alerts between uh, the Moto Turbo radio system and the Wave PTX system. So you can tell which user hit the emergency button be it on a uh, PTX, Wave PTX device or on a Moto Turbo radio with the um, duress button. The Moto Turbo systems that we do support at the moment is the Moto Turbo Capacity Max, the Tier 3 trunking solution, the Capacity Plus, both single and multi-site variants of that, and then more the Legacy Connect Plus. In the roadmap, we have uh, support for Moto Turbo IP site connect and, and conventional systems. We have the support for a, a donor radio solution where we have a radio over IP box. We can sort of enable that now, but it's not sort of activated in through the portal. So if you do have a requirement for a donor radio or to connect into a um, different system type, then um, speak to ACE and um, we can potentially provide a solution for that now. It's just more of a manual setup. It's not fully integrated into the uh, uh, provisioning system. Um, we also, for those of you who have experience with um, the Metro uh, Express, uh, the Motorola's version, um, sort of scalable down version of Tetra, there is a um, roadmap version, uh, roadmap integration into that with the Wave PTX. 
the Wave Radio Gateway. It's a uh, small box. It, it can be quite deceptive there. It looks like a larger sort of desktop, uh, larger box, but it's actually a very small. It's off the shelf micro uh, desktop. At the moment, it's a Dell box, but we may be moving that to a HP box. Um, but either way, when it ships um, to you, it sort of comes as a black box. You plug in a uh, um, to the internet, and it can also act as a Wi-Fi sort of hotspot, so you can connect a, uh, say, a laptop with a Wi-Fi card in it to the gateway and just add the um, details, the IP address on it, and then it can then communicate back to the uh, Wave PTX server and get the configuration that's been configured for that box. So it's designed to be um, easy to deploy. So it's not a complex um, task that requires a lot of time and effort. Yeah, and there's a lot of Motorola's put a lot of effort to make it, but you can um, not quite plug and play, but very short setup time. Um, it runs up this this small version runs up to ten concurrent voice talk paths, so you can have ten simultaneous calls, be private or group talk group calls, going between your Wave PTX and the Moto Turbo radio system. Um, and similar to the Wave Dispatcher, there's remote um, software or firmware upgrades to the box. So you don't have to think about what version that box is running. Um, it can be it's automatically updated from the Wave PTX service as required. For Wave PTX, there's two different packages that you can um, subscribe to with the Wave PTX. So the first of those is collaboration, and then the other one is our command package. So the main difference between these two packages is the last five five items there. The command package is needed when you're doing connecting through to LMR to Moto Turbo system. It also supports ambient and discrete listening, user check and user monitoring. It supports large uh, amount of talk groups. Um, and you can also do a area-based dynamic group. Um, that is, you can from the dispatcher, you could actually draw a geofence, and then have a talk group automatically created, or uh, users switched into that talk group as soon as they entered that geofenced area. In terms of Wave PTX subscriptions. We have uh, four different um, options here. There's the Wave PTX mobile client, which is what you'd run on your BYOD device. So you've gone and um, downloaded the app from the uh, Android or um, Apple stores. We have Wave PTX wireless subscription, which is the TLK100 or the, the soon to be released TLK150 mobile device. That, so that is a Motorola device with a, a SIM card already in it as, as a service. Then we have the Wave PTX Dispatcher. And the last one there is the Wave PTX Moto Turbo Client. So I'll mention, uh, go into a bit more detail on that, but basically it's the ability to run the Wave PTX application on a Moto Turbo radio that supports Wi-Fi. So the same device can be running on a radio network, and then you can change it to a, uh, a, a Wave PTX zone, run over Wi-Fi, and be communicating even when you're outside of radio coverage. The subscriptions you are signed up through the Wave PTX um, portal. Um, Fraser will go through uh, a, a bit of the process behind that. Um, and then the hardware, the, the gateway box, and the TLK um, 100, the Lex, the, the mobile when it comes out will be purchased through ACE. Some of the devices that uh, Motorola are seeing and certifying with uh, the Wave PTX service are some of the popular smartphones that we see, the Samsung devices, the, the iPhones. Um, so Motorola, we, we don't sell these, but we do test and make sure that they do work on, on those sort of very common devices. We also have a range of purpose-built devices, some that you can buy sort of as Motorola devices, others that you can uh, source through 
other partners, other other manufacturers. But the ones that we the Motorola have is the Motorola Lexel 11, purpose-built sort of Android ruggedized device. Our TLK100. There's a company called uh, Rug Gear who makes some devices who Motorola sort of certify the app on. They've got the RG170, which is more a candy bar style device, and then a ruggedized Android device, the RG725. Tablets and specialty devices. There is a Sayata UV350, um, which some of you may have come across as a Uniden branded device, but it's actually manufactured by Sayata. So we've uh, made sure that our application is certified and works on that device. Um, there's also an intrinsically safe and an ATEX certified device as well. Uh, Motorola don't sell that, but it is available if your customers have a requirement um, through, through other partners. And, um, Samsung Galaxy tablets um, and Apple iPads. So the application will work across all those devices listed there. If the device is not listed there, the application still may, may work on it, generally works on most Android devices, um, where we have to be uh, a little bit more careful is around if, it's, if there's a push to talk button on the device, then sometimes it will work, sometimes we'll need to have a look at and see um, if we can remap that on the device. But it's always sort of recommended to sort of test it out, the way PTX app, on a device that you're using um, or, or potentially going to be selling if it's not one of the devices that we've listed here. Okay, just a video on the way, uh, TLK100, go for a minute and a half. Okay, so this is um, an area that I'm sort of quite excited about, the TLK100. So there is a lot of competition out in this pusher talk over cellular space. One area I think we've had um, very, very positive feedback on is, is the actual device that we've got, the TLK100, in that it works well. It's got an, an antenna, so people actually say that they're getting coverage with this device, which when they're not getting any any signal on their mobile phone device, um, because we've got the extra um, the an external antenna on this device, the audio sounds very well. Um, all of the device management for this device is done via the, the the portal, so there's no worry about having to lock it down as to what devices they're installing onto their Android or iOS device. It's got the um, radio sort of form factor, but it's slim um, and quite, uh, at least I think it's quite a good looking device. Um, and it just seems to be getting very, very positive feedback. It's uh, based on the same accessories as the Motorola SL2600. So if you've got anyone who's got those um, accessories and will work in the same charger and use the same audio accessories, it's IP54 rated. It's got a simple display, so it's one of these, uh, sort of looks like it's a heat, there's no display when it's off, but 
it sort of shines through the casing. Um, and that'll show you the channel you're on. Um, and it also, you can do private calls by pressing the uh, button on the, um, on the side to, to cycle through contacts. Um, it's got a long battery life, up to 18 hours. It's got a SIM card embedded in it, and it's running on Australia's sort of largest carrier. And it's also got Wi-Fi connectivity. So you've got the option when you configure it to say, I'm going to prefer to use um, 4G or I'm going to prefer to use Wi-Fi. And you can add multiple Wi-Fi networks into the device. Um, so if you've got certain sites where you go, um, especially if you've got things maybe as a underground car park where you're not getting any um, 4G signal, then potentially you can have a Wi-Fi access point in there and still provide coverage. Um, so anything else I need to mention there, the audio accessories, there is a RSM available for it. Um, and there we are working on a Bluetooth RSM as well. In terms of having a familiar device, I, I mentioned before there is a capability to run Wave PTX on a uh, Moto Turbo radio device, as long as it's a Wi-Fi enabled device. And that's done by um, changing zones into a wave zone, and then you can select through your wave channels. Um, so it basically operates as you're installing the Wave PTX app onto the radio and having the same sort of features in terms of which talk groups, um, private group calling from the same device. So if you've got a radio user and they do go outside of coverage, be it in a um, DM4000 series mobile or a DP4000 series portable or an SL4010 portable, you have the ability to run that Wave PTX on the same device as long as you've got a Wi-Fi connection. And we're starting to see some vehicles that have a so 4G to Wi-Fi device. So this can be hooked up, um, the mobile can be hooked up to that, have a Wi-Fi, then the radio user can just change channel to his wave zone when he's outside of radio coverage. So that's available now. Um, and uh, the provisioning or the pricing for that is the same as a BYOD client. Just um, one slide on our Motorola Lex L11 device. So we do a uh, purpose-built, ruggedized Android, um, open Android um, device with a push-to-talk button, um, programmable buttons, um, channel selector switch at the top, emergency button. Um, it's got, got a good display on there that's designed to be able to be worked um, on when there's rain on the screen or whether there is um, the person's wearing gloves. So it's really uh, sort of pitched, um, it will sort of come from the, the requirements of our, some of our public safety users, but it's still a perfectly good device for commercial users as well. And, and that comes in sort of less than a um, iPhone device cost-wise. We also, um, I mentioned the Sayada UV350, which is a LT vehicle device. Um, so this is a sort of combination tablet and mobile um, form factor device. So it's got the, the larger 5.5 uh, display. Um, comes an external microphone, external speaker, um, and a, sort of a range of accessories such as things like um, steering wheel, push to talk accessories, foot switches, um, RSMs, Bluetooth um, RSM options. Um, you do hands-free dialing, voice commands. You can also do telephone calls on this device as well. You can also run as a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot um, and Bluetooth. It can, and there's option, it comes with a standard sort of uh, antenna and there's options for roof mounted uh, external antennas as well. So Motorola, don't sell this directorate, um, but we are in sort of discussions with um, um, well, ACE as to whether that can be something that can be offered through to um, ACE's partners. In terms of the uh, launch of Wave PTX, 
So we started demoing this to certain um, people in early 2019. We launched the service in October 19. The first of the TLKs started shipping in November 2019. We made a demo kit offer for December 19, which is uh, sold out to um, from the Motorola perspective, but I believe Ace have uh, 10 demo kits still available. And that demo kit was made up of um, two TLK 100s, one Lex L11 and a range of accessories. So if you've got any uh, um, interest in um, getting some Wave PTX hardware, oh, and the other thing to mention, it came with two years sub subscription services for those devices a dispatcher and some BYD devices. So, and it was all at a sort of greatly reduced price off the, off the standard um, offering. So if you've got any uh, requirements or you want some demonstration equipment to, to show your customers, then have, have a chat to Ace, because once those 10 are, um, are gone, then it won't be a offer that good in terms of demonstration equipment. Sort of, uh, it was actually well below sort of a Motorola cost as well. So. Um, there's, uh, Ace is the only place that these are still available, so take advantage of that if, if you see any uh, requirement for Wave PTX. In January uh, 2020 this year, we made some improvements to our portal, um, and that's when we launched the uh, the Wave PTX app on the Moto Turbo devices, and that can be provisioned through the portal. Um, there is a large development team in um, India working on this. Um, I think they're at minimum 300 people, and I think they've got trying to recruit another 300 people. So, from that gives you some idea of the scale that there'll be 600 people developing the Wave um, portfolio, and there is a lot of roadmap features that we're we're seeing that um, hopefully of uh, interest um, to, to our partners here in Australia and New Zealand. Um, Fraser will be taking you through the Wave. Uh, management portal in some demonstrations, but as a quick overview, there's multiple levels of support. So there'll be the distributor, Ace, who will um, have a account and make a partner account for the Ace partners. And then as an Ace partner, you can make a uh, multiple customer accounts under your partner account. You can add a new customer, a new license in minutes, um, and the portal actually manages the TLK100 device. There's also been a lot of improvements made to the portal around uh, rental customers. So if any of you have a rental or see a need for rental devices that can be pushed to talk over cellular, then this portal has done a lot of the, um, it, there's been a lot of improvements to make that easier and quicker. So instead of in the, the standard radio world where you have to get a radio back, program it, set it up for each rental, this can all be done automatically. You can upload a spreadsheet with, this is a, um, rental that I'm going out to, portal takes that and then automatically programs all the radios with that details for you. If you have a requirement for a trial, then work with Ace and they can work with Motorola in terms of we can set up a um, demonstration account so you can go off and demonstrate the Wave PTX. Um, if it's BYOD on running on iPhone or Android, then there's no hardware involved, but we can also have a look at um, TLK 100, so whether that's a good way now is to get the, the, um, <coughs> the demo kits or we can look at, uh, <coughs> if it's a, a good opportunity, what we can do to support you with um, some demo equipment there as well. In terms of the Wave PTX roadmap, uh, um, sort of confirmed features that we've got coming very soon. The TLK 100 will have the ability to support emergency via a, um, double press of the, the menu button. Um, we'll go at the moment, TLK100 supports eight talk groups. There's a release coming to make that 96 talk groups. We have a TLK150, which is a mobile form factor coming. Video streaming I mentioned, and we've also got a new Bluetooth accessory um, coming uh, next, well, hopefully towards the end of this month as well. Some things are under discussion on is indoor tracking. So if you've got the requirements for indoor tracking with the um, push talk over cellular devices, BYD devices, or even a um, TLK100, then we're looking at how we can integrate with an iBeacon-based indoor tracking solution. 
um, and bring that back into the dispatcher. Some other devices that we're looking at, and this is not confirmed, is a smaller CLP sort of form factor, so the ones you see more in a retail environment. There's a Wi-Fi sort of only device. Um, we're looking at pager type devices, so is there a requirement to do um, paging scenarios? And also, should Motorola have a candy bar style device, similar to the, the rugby, rugby one I showed on the other slide. So if you've got any opportunities or any uh, feedback, on what devices you think Motorola should should bring out with Wave PTX and feed that back through ACE and um, would appreciate feedback on that. The TLK150, which is the uh, broadband PTT mobile radio. So when we launched, we launched with a portable only. We had the Seattle UV350 as an option, um, but this is a the Motorola um, um, direct um, manufactured device, the TLK150, it's available, I'm saying the end of Q2, I'm hoping a little, little bit sooner, so we're in Q2, not the end of Q2, but um, it is coming soon. If you have any requirements for a customer who is after mobile devices, then within um, a few weeks potentially we'll have some units that we could have for uh, show and, and, and tell and for them to demonstrate and even trial. So if you've got an opportunity and you need to get a device into their hands sooner than when this is generally available towards the end of Q2, let um, Grant know and he can work with us in terms of if we can get some devices out to show the customer um, and well, convince them to wait until this is uh, fully available. So it's a mobile form factor, it's smaller. Um, it's got a wideband audio microphone, so the feedback we're getting on the trials that we're doing with it is actually very good quality through the uh, uh, FIST microphone. Um, and it's um, got diversity antennas on the back as well, so if you wanted to get some extra signal by having multiple antennas for it, it's 4G LTE, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and um, obviously supports GPS as well. There is a range of accessories that will be available for it on release as well. Coming in March is a, or towards the end of March, is a WM500 wireless remote speaker microphone. Um, this is designed to work with BYD Android um, devices, the Android based Lexel 11 and also iOS devices. So it's a uh, RSM, um, it's got volume triggers, emergency power buttons, it's got programmable buttons channel change, call answer. So you can also do a telephone call over this, so full duplex support. Designed to have 25 hours uh, minimum battery life, it's IP67, it's a one watt uh, rated speaker in it, um, and it also has got a USB-C uh, charging lead in it, and it also is um, dockable charging. So. The, um, we've got a few units here, we've been playing with them and we've been very impressed with these devices as well. Um, the pricing's not confirmed as yet, but we're expecting that to be released very shortly, but that'll be available from ACE uh, um, hope towards the uh, end of March. So in terms of the uh, key focus markets, um, first of those is sort of the transport and logistics. Um, so we're seeing sort of smartphones or tablets going into some, some trucks and things like that, um, whereas we see an opportunity to have Wave, Wave PTX running on those devices or as a purpose-built uh, UV350 or a TLK150 being installed into these vehicles um, for giving you that wide area coverage. So anywhere they can get um, carrier, coverage, then they can get uh, voice communications. Now that could be all on broadband sort of wave PTX or it could be broad, uh, broadband wave PTX back into a radio network. Um, one of the other areas we're seeing a lot of uptake is around rental car companies, um, Avis, Pertz, um, they're already, uh, um, got, we've already got some good, good users um, for where they need to communicate from their sort of where they store their vehicles, um, where they're cleaning their vehicles, back to their front office um, and, and their customer service um, centres. 
Um, security, so where we need wide area coverage um, and the, the security guard needs to be able to communicate um, and then even potentially use the duress button um, and then Motorola can have the, the way or the way PTX dispatcher can also allow the um, uh, the security uh, control room to see where the, the staff are, what incidents they're out and attending. With Wave PTX um, budgeting, um, it's a the, the model that we have in, in Australia for Wave PTX. You buy the the hardware, the TLK100, TLK150, or the Wave Gateway up front, but then the subscription is a monthly reoccurring fee. Um, for both the, the TLK100 or the uh, BYOD or the dispatcher. Um, the TLK100 is a two year um, contract and there's a, if there's a requirement for you, you need to break your customer um, breaks that contract then there's a $40 sort of cancellation fee outside of if you break before the two year contract term. Um, BYOD and dispatches you can turn on and off on a per month basis. So that lets you scale up and down quickly depending on sort of any requirements of your, of your customer case. And then the last aspect, the web-based administration portal makes it easy to update your account, add or remove talk groups and more, and Fraser will be going through that, but that's a very important thing. Motorola has um, spent a lot of time developing it, um, this portal, make it easier for people to provision uh, make ads and changes, take talk groups, add new talk groups. So we do see some of the competitors out there do not have as a rounded offering in terms of the provisioning side of it. That's where Motorola spent a lot of time and effort to make this as easy as possible for the people who are going out and provisioning and, and selling this Wave PTX service. So at this point I'll um, hand over to Fraser who will go through the uh, Wave PTX portal. Beautiful, thank you. Do you want to just um, have a look at some of the questions? Yep. So Okay, while Fraser's setting up there, um, we did have a question saying, is it possible in the future to have a local Wi-Fi talk group without the need for internet? Um, at the moment, no, it does have to go back to the uh, Wave PTX server. Um, if it's a large customer has that requirement, um, which we get sort of around things like uh, mining customers, then there is the option for the Wave PTX light solution. Um, but it is it is a cloud based service. I think that was the uh, yep that was the only question there. Yeah, no. there was another one. Yeah. Oh, that's wrong. All right. Uh, will video streaming and messaging be additional costs or all included? So the the messaging is included. Um, so the messaging as it stands, you can send a picture, you can send a video, that's all included in the standard sort of subscription you pay. If you wanted to see it on a dispatcher, then you've got a dispatcher subscription. Video streaming, because of the live video streaming, because of the bandwidth that uses, um, there will be an additional cost and we're just working through the sort of how that is uh, commercially um, structured so it's, it's a viable option and what are the cases around that. Beautiful, all right, thanks Dave. Um, so just for the for the rest of this session, um, I'm just gonna walk everyone through kind of what the, the WAVE PTX administration portal looks like uh, and how we can get customers set up um, and uh, like a WAVE solution delivered. So this is kind of your your default screen that you guys will see when you when you log into your wave portal um, so from here we can do um, a couple of different things in terms of managing our customers 
keeping an eye on the billing cycle uh, and managing access to the portal. So I'm just going to run you through all of those. Um, so in terms of managing uh, access to this portal, if we come up to the top right here, we can see a little wheel and we can click on employees. Load. So this is what we call our employee list um, and this is how we can manage the roles and um, rights of people that log into our Wave PTX portal. So if we click on add employee at the top, we get the option to create a login for uh, a, a new user. Um, so this creates a login for a user at what we call a partner level. So this is your level. Um, and these partners have an overview of all of the customers under this account. Um, so when this person logs in, they can see all of those customers, um, depending on how you, you want this set up. So if we create a test login and then um, create a dummy phone number and we'll just create a demo, uh, a dummy email address. Oops. We've created a login um, for a new user. So the other thing we can we can manage at this level is the roles and rights of each of these users. So we've got three different roles uh, that people can use um, uh, that, that can be assigned to an employee. So an admin has access to everything. They're able to uh, access uh, customers that they're given access to. They're able to manage the employee list. They're, they're able to view the billing cycle. They're able to do everything. Um, billing allows you to view um, upcoming um, bills that will be incurred through through licensing of the um, uh, of the portal from all of your customer accounts underneath uh, your respective businesses. Um, so this, so billing just gives you an overview of what to expect, but your bills are actually received from ACE. Uh, Motorola does not bill you directly. Uh, partner support uh, enables um, employees to be given access to particular customer accounts um, and do things like manage their, their users or manage their talk groups or their licensing and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so you can create logins for, you know, admin people, technical people, sales people, um, and kind of cascade their access down from a partner level to a customer level, um, which I'll show you how to do um, as we get more in depth into um, customer administration. Um, so that everyone kind of has access only to the things that you want them to have access to. Um, but everyone in your business can, um, can get access to the Wave portal. So if we click on billing on the left, uh, what we can see is the demo customer that I set up in advance, um, when their next bill is going to be incurred, the amount, um, the, the list price of those subscriptions and uh, what that amounts to, um, the status of that um, subscription and um, a, a link to go to that uh, customer's subscription page. So if if there are any discrepancies, if it's different to what we expect, we can adjust those licenses. Um, so it's in line with what we expect. So finally, um, we're also able to kind of get an overview, we're able to add customers and we're able to manage the customers that already exist. So as you can see here, I've got a pre-created demo customer, but what I'll do is I'll walk you through how we add a customer. So on this screen, we need to have the details of the MSI um, account rep. So, Grant, or Grant, yeah. That one works. Uh, and from here, we can kind of start filling in the information on that um, on that particular customer that we're creating. So, if we create. Uh, Customer one two three. 
um, we've, we've given that company a name and we can also give them an alias. So uh, this doesn't have to actually tie up to anything. This can you know, help sync it with your um, internal billing process or something like that. Um, yeah, you can, you can put whatever you like in that customer alias. Um, put in a contact phone number. And we always want to select Australia or New Zealand, depending on what's relevant. Um, so below this, we've got the customer admin user. So this is effectively creating a, um, uh, an employee at that customer level. Um, so if we create a customer um, employee at customer.com, we'll see that cascade down. So Fraser, we had a question. What happens if we accidentally make a customer in America? So if we don't, if we don't select Australia, um, they'll see some irrelevant options to them in their customer account, um, and I think it'll actually mess with their billing. Yeah, too, because um, they'll have all the US pricing and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, you do want to avoid making a. Um, a customer on, on America or on the American server. Yeah. And it might actually try and provision them on the it does US yeah. PTX Wave PTX server. So, so it'll be a worse experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, so once we've filled in that information we can hit next and we see this screen. Um, so internally we've got the ability to provision a demo. So if that is a requirement for um, a particular customer we, we're able to provision that from our end. You guys will see a radio system type here. So this is if you've got a Moto Turbo system you're connecting to, um, you can start to pre-populate some of those details into that customer account. If you hit none here, it makes no difference. You can just add it in um, in the customer account later on. So we get a, a review screen, so we can make sure that everything's okay. If it is, we just hit save at the bottom. So we can see a, a confirmation here um, and we're given the ability to add a monthly subscription. So this is the collaboration package option or we can add a monthly uh, subscription for the command package. Um, <clears throat> either or, depending on which one you click, it'll take you through to a Chargeify page. So we only have to go through this screen once. Once we add in licenses later, it, it's a lot more streamlined. Um, so we can choose, you know, if we want five wave apps, uh, so BYD uh, subscriptions, five dispatch subscriptions or five TLK subscriptions, update total. So it'll calculate a pro rata amount for the rest of the month. Um, and then it'll tell you what their monthly fee will be. Um, so this is, all, this is all the list pricing. Uh, what the monthly fee will be um, at the start of next month. So it'll start to pre-populate some of the customer information with what we put in before. Um, and we are required to enter in shipping information. The shipping information doesn't really go anywhere. It's um, like all your billing and that sort of, there's nothing to ship because it's all delivered um, digitally. Um, and all the billing is received from ACE. Um, so you can really put, you know, the, the shipping information of the customer or your business or whatever in there. It actually doesn't make much of a difference. Um, so, yeah, I'll just fill in some. Um, actually, we'll get rid of this one because that'll difference. So once we've um, added those subscriptions and we've hit place order, it'll uh, bring up uh, our new entitlement. So um, it'll tell us we can add five BYD, BYD users and it tells us we can add five dispatches as well. Cool. 
So what I'm going to do is I'll just flick over to the one I created before. Just makes things a bit quicker. So this is a demo customer that I had uh, pre-prepared for today. Uh, so this is the the kind of customer screen. Um, so this is the the um, screen we use to uh, manage the customer, you know, T demo customer in this instance. Um, but this is really who's buying the service from you um, in, in your businesses. So if we click on users on the left, we get access to our user men, uh, user list, uh, and we can see uh, the status of um, you know how many. Uh, licenses we've got added to this account, how many we've used, so you know, we've used one of one uh, that we've paid for, um, as well as all of the users um, that are currently um, on the account. So if I just jump up into um, the wheel at the top, So we can also manage the employee access to um, each of our individual customer accounts. So we can add an employee at this uh, at a customer level. So if we add a, a custom, if we add an employee um, while you're in a customer account, uh, that employee will only be able to view that particular customer account. Um, so it's a way of giving access to you know your customers they can have access to their particular portal so that they can manage their own users they can adjust talk groups as they like um, they can um, adjust contacts all that sort of thing so if i go to one i've, I've already prepared we can see that the roles down here are slightly different in the customer level so as you'd expect the admin role is able to view everything um, and they're able to do everything a radio admin is able to manage our um, parameters around radio systems uh, when we've got an interop, you know, when we've got a wave radio gateway connected to a CAT plus system or something like that. Um, so they're able to manage, you know, uh, radio subscribers um, and look after, uh, you know, the, the networking information of your, your radio system. Uh, provisioning is able to do the same thing, but for the wave users. So they're only able to manage, you know, wave users, um, uh, wave talk groups, um, you know, TLKs, that sort of thing. Um, and customer support is able to do everything on an account, but they're not allowed to adjust licenses. So it's it's worth having a, a think. You know, is it is it uh, for some particular customers? You might want them to be able to manage your own system, but you might not want them to be able to add licenses and incur billing. Um, and there's also the option if, if you want to sort of fully manage the customer, you don't give them access as an employee. Yeah. They just uh, speak to you when they want to add more yeah. ads or changes or talk so, groups and so on. It's very flexible, so you can kind of do it however you feel is best for, for that particular customer. Um, so the other option we have at, an, uh, at a customer level is we can add a partner employee. So when we create a partner employee account, they do not automatically get access to every single customer account. We need to cascade down access from a partner level down to a customer level. Um, at the moment, if this test login um, employee account we created at a partner level tried to click on this particular customer account, they would get an unauthorized error because we haven't given them permission to view the account. So it's just a way of locking down who's got access to which particular customer accounts. So if we click tick there and then add, we can see that all that information we created before gets dropped down to this customer account. So now they are able to access a T demo customer. Um, so if we click up in the wheel again, and we click account. Here is where we can manage our subscriptions. So if we click on manage my account down here, we've just got a very quick snapshot of when we pay licenses through to uh, when it was activated uh, and kind of the balance holding on that account for the next uh, billing period. And as Fraser mentioned before, that's a, sort of the end customer. The, yeah, this price. is what the end customer would would see and this is yeah their end customer pricing yeah and you can hide that as well from if you don't give the yeah. employee access to this you they can, will not see it yeah, yeah. 
Um, and we can also manage our subscriptions here. So if we click manage subscription, we can see uh, the uh, product that we've um, subscribed to. So in this case, it's collaboration. Um, <clears throat> and Fraser, we had a question around the different subscriptions. So do you want to just confirm which one the subscription step? Cool, okay. Um, so I'll, everyone's sec. Yep. So below that, we've got our dispatch entitlements and our um, wave wireless entitlements. That's just because those are the only two licenses that we've got on this account. Uh, but you will see uh, uh, the number of licenses that you have associated on that, that customer account. If we click add licenses here, um, we can very quickly just add extra um, licenses uh, to this customer account. So we can add an extra three BYOD licenses, for example. Yep. Um, so we just had a, a question around what each of the licenses are for. Yep. Um, so the top one up here, the Wave App license, these are the licenses for the BYOD uh, application. So that's the application you download and you install on Android devices like the Lynx or a Samsung Galaxy, as well as the license for, um, uh, like if you've got an iPhone or something and you download it from the App Store. So that, that's what that one's for. The one below is for the Dispatch Console. So this is the one that David spoke about earlier, the one that uh, works on Chrome and Internet Explorer on desktops and laptops. Below that, we have the Wave Moto Turbo licenses. So these are the licenses for um, the Moto Turbo 2.10 client. Uh, so if you're running it on a like a DP4801E or something like that. Below that is the Wave Wireless license. So this is the license for TLK devices like the 100. With the included SIM card. With the included SIM card. And the yep. device management. Yeah. So hopefully that, that's cleared that up. Um, so, vice versa, we've got the ability to remove licenses as well. Um, so, the way that um, the billing works on a removed license is that it's, it's um, you have a $40 charge for the uh, way of wireless, uh, sorry, for, for like cancelling a TLK, um, and a minimum one month cost on um, the other licenses. From here, we can also upgrade or downgrade um, from the WAVE uh, collaboration package to the command package, and we can also downgrade too. Uh, and we also have the ability to cancel all of our subscriptions. So that's kind of the nuclear option. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we don't have to go to, go to that, but um, if you do see that there's a requirement for that, you can cancel all of them from here. So back to the user screen. Um, so in terms of actually creating and managing um, users for the, for the WAVE system. So if we click add user up the top, um, we have three options here. So we've got the mobile or tablet. So this is for all BYOD devices. You click on that. We have to enter a display name um, for, the, for that particular login, um, a phone number and an email. So for the display name, we can do uh, mobile client three. For the phone number, um, you can choose which number to put, uh, if you want to put a phone number in here. If you do not want to put a phone number in, you can click tablet user or Wi-Fi only device. It actually doesn't make too much of a difference from the user's perspective. Um, either way, what happens is an activation code is generated um, and that is put into the application that you're wanting to, to use this, this user on. Um, for the email address, you can have as many mobile clients um, on one um, email address as you like. Um, they'll just receive multiple emails with the activation codes on them. Um, so you can either do that unique or, or all on one, it's, it's up to you. Fraser, we had another question. Can one license log into two different phones at separate times? No, it's a license per device. Yep. So there was some, uh, I think we were having user sign in as, a, um, as an option. As an option, but the standard way it actually um, it registers to your device 
which has the benefit that you don't need to sign in every time every time you want to use the app, which is with our previous product, our Wave 5001, you had to sign into the app. Yeah. Whereas this, it's um, locked to your device. Yeah. Um, you can unsign it from the device by the portal, log out, and then assign it to another device. Um, but if you have the requirement where you've got multiple users need to share devices, then we're, we've got the um, user signing capability. But we can have a discussion with you about how how that can be set up as yeah. required. So I guess the answer is no right now, but yes with user sign yeah. on later on. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we create a Moto Turbo client, so again for for a Wi-Fi enabled radio like a DP forty eight hundred one e. Um, it's, it's very, very similar. Um, we just create a display name for that particular device and an email address. Um, you'll receive a, an activation code at that um, email address. Um, so if, you, if you're curious on, on how you, you set up the rest of that um, in terms of actually programming in that activation code into your radio and setting up Wi-Fi and that sort of thing, um, I've shared a guide with uh, Grant um, and Grant's able to, to pass that along. Um, if you'd like more detail on how that works. Uh, and the other option we've got here is the wave dispatch. So this is the, again, display name of the dispatcher and the email address of the dispatcher. So for a dispatcher, it's a bit different. Each of the email addresses has to be unique because the email address is kind of your username to sign on to the dispatch uh, console. Um, so when you, you set up that uh, dispatch user, they'll receive an email uh, with a link um, asking them to set up a password. So I've actually, uh, as you can see, I've, I've kind of pre-populated with some um, uh, users already. So down here at the bottom is uh, a BYOD user, so a mobile client. Um, we can see with the little Wi-Fi symbol next to it. Um, so I didn't put in a phone number, I ticked that box. So if we need to, um, uh, if we don't have access to the original activation code or um, you know, we put in a dummy email address or something, we can click generate under activation code. Uh, oh, sorry, it's disabled. Uh, and we're able to produce a, an activation code for that user. It'll also generate a new email address, uh, sorry, a new email with an activation code to go out to that user too. Um, so if you've lost access to the original one, don't worry about it. You can just hit generate here. It'll create a new one for you. Um, so the email address that's associated with it, um, the status of that user. This user is disabled because I haven't added a, a Wave BYD license um, to that. But as you can see, the dispatcher is active because there is a dispatch license added up here. Um, so if we click under the talk groups on the right here, um, we're able to manage a um, which talk groups this particular user has access to, just with the little tick on the side. We're able to see the type of talk group that it is. Um, I'll run you through that in a, in a little bit once we get up to the talk group section. And we're able to see the rights of that user and what they're able to do on that uh, talk group. So for the default talk group, this user is able to initiate a call, receive a call, and when they're in a call, they're able to talk back and they're able to listen. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's kind of the default. So if you've got any users that, you know, you only want them to be able to listen to a talk group or anything like that, you can manage that here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the tick box next to it is a location watcher. So if you want that mobile client to be able to view the location of other users in that talk group on their app, you need to tick the location watcher box. So what this does is it actually turns off your ability to manage contacts. Your contacts um, are gonna be pre-populated by the, um, they're gonna be pre-populated by the other members of that talk group. So because this is ticked, my, uh, both of these are ticked, my contacts list is going to be the members of default talk group and the dispatch talk group. Um, and it gives us a little option in the map tab on the application to select a talk group to monitor the location of. Once you do that, um, the location of those users will pop up on the app. Um, 
The next one over is supervisor. So supervisor is effectively transmit interrupt. Um, <clears throat> and obviously the broadcaster one um, makes a bit more sense if you've got a, a user that is um, on a broadcast call group, um, whether or not they're able to initiate one of those um, broadcast calls. So we just click on the name of the user here. We're able to manage the contacts and the features of the user. So from here, we're able to change the name of the, the mobile client if we need to. This is a uh, automatically generated number um, internally in the system. It's, it's effectively a phone number. So if you've got another user that has that number, they can actually dial it in their, their Wave app and call that, even if it's not programmed in as a contact or a talk group. Um, if you choose to put in a phone number when you're creating the user, it'll, it'll um, use that number instead. So to the right, we've got two different types of clients. We've got a cross-carrier standard. So this is 99% of devices and cross-carrier PTT radio. So that's more relevant to mobile type devices like the Ciata UV350, um, where it, it um, essentially makes you put all the talk groups into a set of zones uh, just to, uh, and, and creates a more friendly UI for um, environments when you're you know, in a, a vehicle. Um, billing number is the same as the phone number up here. Um, so the state, uh, so it's suspended because I haven't got a BYD license on that particular user. Um, but this will tell us whether or not that um, mobile client has been activated, whether or not it's um, disabled, whether or not it's been created, but it's not actually been used in any devices, anything like that. Um, so permissions expiring on, we can ignore safely. Um, so down at the bottom, we've got our email ID. So we can change the email um, that that account is associated to if we need to. Um, and we're able to see the activation code. Um, so because we haven't got a BYD license, no activation code is popping up. Um, but a little bit of a little bit of a cheat here. Um, if you have a mobile client, you want to log out from one device and put into another device, you can hit the little lightning bolt on the side there. It'll regenerate a new activation code, but it will also kick out the, um, the current login from that device. So the other thing we can uh, manage here is we can um, click on this little icon here uh, and delete uh, members from our contacts list. We can also hit the little uh, man symbol with the plus and add uh, contacts to the device. So this is how we add and remove contacts from each of the devices. It's a bit clearer. So talk groups, we can view the talk groups that we're associated with, um, but we don't actually uh, manage the talk groups in this screen. We do it in the one I showed you previously. Just on talk groups, Fraser, we had a question around uh, how do you get the TLK100 to do a broadcast um, call? Can't get it to do that even when set up in the app. Broadcast call. Have to get back to you on that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's a follow up one. Yeah. Yep. Um, might not be assigned a talk group position. I think that's what it is, but I'll have to look into it more. Um, so if we just hit features um, on the uh, next tab, we're able to view the, um, some of the features that we're entitled to on, on that particular device. Um, so we can see the collaboration package um, is the, the um, package that we've got um, for that mobile client. Um, <clears throat> and we're able to view uh, the features that that entitles us to here. Um, I haven't got this logged in on any devices, but when it is, we're able to view um, details about the, the device, the, the app version, that sort of thing, that's useful as a kind of a device management um, perspective. Um, and we're able to define parameters around publishing location. So if we say yes, publish location, the app is going to be publishing our GPS coordinates back to the Wave server um, by default every 10 minutes. If we hit no, it is not going to do that, but it will do it in an emergency situation. 
Um, so if you hit emergency on that device, it will push out GPS coordinates anyway. Um, so just keep that in mind, but it's um, some people can get um, a bit concerned when um, <clears throat> when they think they, they can be um, followed by you know their, their boss or something. Um, it's, it's a useful way to kind of take control of that conversation a bit when you can say, hang on, we can set it up so you only report location in an emergency. Fraser, we had a question. Is the only way of increasing GPS polling by the dispatch software? Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so below that, we've got our emergency um, settings as well. So we're able to define whether or not that user is able to create an emergency, whether or not that user um, when uh, has a special tone when they receive or they initiate an emergency, uh, where that emergency is sent to, or if it just goes across the current talk group or, or uh, contact, um, and if we do talk group steering, where it goes to. So at the moment, the way it's set up is um, when someone declares an emergency, it automatically goes to the dispatch talk group, because that's all it's set up to handle it. Um, so we've also got the ability for uh, call initiation type. So at the moment it's set as manual, so that means someone declares an emergency, they still have to hold the PTT button um, to communicate. We can set it as uh, automatic for what's effectively ambient listening. Um, and whether or not we want the user to be able to cancel their own emergency, or whether or not an authorised user um, uh, has to cancel that emergency. Um, so obviously we don't see it right now, but in the future with, uh, with video streaming, that's also um, that also populates here as well in this this menu. Um, and it'll, it'll, it's got parameters around, you know, is this user actually allowed to screen video and that sort of thing. Um, so the managing a dispatcher is effectively the same as well. Um, as is managing a Moto Turbo client. So I won't run you through um, all of it just because we're, um, we've got heaps of time left. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much exactly the same. We can add um, contacts in this menu. We can manage our, uh, we can view our uh, talk groups um, and view the features that this user is entitled to. Um, so if we click into our talk groups menu, um, here we're able to view all of the talk groups that we've got set up on our, um, on our uh, WAVE system. So we have three types of talk groups. So we've got a standard talk group. So a standard talk group is um, mobile clients, uh, TLKs and motor turbo devices only, so no dispatches. If we want a dispatcher to be a part of that talk group, it needs to be a dispatch type talk group. Um, but other than that, they're, they're effectively the same. And we also have a broadcast talk group. Um, so when we um, are managing these, these talk groups, we can either drag users over to um, talk groups um, from a users list here that populates everything but dispatches. Um, or we can hover over and click the little pen icon to edit that particular uh, talk group. Um, <clears throat> so from here we can add our users and we can add dispatches to the talk group. So generally you get an update to the mobile client um, and the dispatcher within probably about 30 seconds if that. Um, it's, it's generally very, very quick to be pushed out. And Fraser, there it says three out of 20 active talk groups. Is 20 a hard limit? So 20 is not a hard limit on the number of talk groups. Um, it's kind of the by default max, but we are able to increase that, um, I think, to 100. Um, yeah, I I'm fairly certain the limit to talk groups on a mobile client uh, is 100 through the portal and then 30 ad hoc talk groups created. Yeah, because you can create extra talk groups in the app. 
So if you have a requirement for more than the 20, then reach out to Grant and um, we can, we can yeah, enable yeah. it. Yeah. So kind of the next option down here is the WAVE devices. So this is where we manage our TLK devices. Um, so our TLK 100s now and also TLK 150s in the future. So if we register a device, um, we can, we just need to populate the IMEI, the serial number and the display name. We can also import from a CSV file as well, up to 50 devices um, at a time. So um, I'll flick over to um, another account that we have internally that has a couple of TLKs on it. So we can run you through uh, managing TLKs. So just bear with me one sec. So I've got a couple of TLKs added to this account. So if we click on one of the, the TLKs here, um, so TLK 101, um, we can get some details around um, which device um, we're looking at the alias of the device, so the settings, so we can force uh, things like Wi-Fi to always be on or always off. Um, same with uh, cellular or voice announcements or Bluetooth or all that sort of thing. Um, we can enable or disable the, that user's ability to manage their um, settings. Um, and we're also able to edit um, device, wave devices. We're also able to edit um, Wi-Fi networks or, or Bluetooth um, uh, devices um, for either all of our devices or, or a number of our devices or just one at a time, um, depending on what's required. You can also do things like stun and unstun from here as well, or even wipe the device. We click on users again. Um, so the TLKs, so let's click over to that TLK I had up. So TLKs populate the user list as well, and we can also manage um, which talk groups uh, they are in um, as well. So if we have a, a dispatcher talk group um, that it's part of, we can um, enforce whether or not particular talk groups have a, a priority level, whether or not, again, they're able to um, receive or, or um, initiate a call or um, respond to uh, a, a call that's received. Um, but one thing we need to keep in mind with a TLK is when we add it to a talk group, it does not automatically assign it a position in its talk group list. So we need to make sure that when we have a TLK, we give it a position in the talk group list, um, otherwise it will not appear. Um, so just the other quick thing I'd, I'm gonna run you through today is um, how a, a interrupt radio system looks like. So we have a wave radio gateway set up on this account just for our internal testing. Um, so, we just click on the little tick here. Um, we've got, uh, all, all we need to do is pop uh, to interrupt a radio system with our um, uh, wave system, is populate this menu with a uh, list of um, network parameters and associate a gateway to the device. So when we get a gateway, um, we connect to it over Wi-Fi and we receive a device code and we just give it a little um, reference name as well. So we can associate that to a radio system um, and populate the um, radio system with um, uh, the subscribers. That's all we have to do to get a radio system interop with, uh, with WAVE. Um, <clears throat> so we're adding the radio IDs in here. Yeah, so it, it goes both ways. Yeah. So when we have a, uh, when we've got a subscriber to a radio system, speaking over RF, um, obviously it's got a radio ID. So what we do in WAVE is we take that radio ID and we say this is, 
uh, an alias for that particular device, similar to programming in a contacts list into your radio, just kind of going the other way. Yeah, so this is if you want to have the ID map between both yeah. of them. If you, you don't have to do this, you could yeah. just have a, a wave yeah. ID if you don't need to know which radio is actually keying up. Yeah, um, so it kind of goes the other way as well. Um, for wave subscribers, we need to give it a radio ID um, that the radio system is kind of expecting to see. Uh, so as we can see here, this is my, my personal phone. I've given it the radio ID 580. So when my phone PTTs and it talks to a radio or it talks to a, a radio system, uh, sorry, talk group on a radio system, um, it passes through a radio ID of 580. Um, and so when we've got a program this way, we can actually add in um, radio subscribers as contacts to our mobile clients or our dispatcher or even uh, TLKs. Yep. I had a question, Fraser. Is yep. the talk group a channel on the TLK 100? So yes. So on yep. a we refer to channels and talk groups interchangeably, really. Yeah. Um, so on the TLK when it says channel one, that's, that, that's the talk group. Talk group one one. Or, yeah. So, um, yes. so that's kind of a very brief overview of how we um, interrupt kind of individual devices. When we're um, interrupting talk groups um, in our talk group system, uh, menu, um, we can add a a, um, a new talk group of any of the types you defined before. Um, if we select a radio system, let me say, uh, it asks us for the talk group ID. So that talk group ID it's asking for is the ID of a talk group on your radio system. So if you have talk group ID 50 on your radio system, um, when demo 123 PTTs, it's all, oops, as we said, our range is 200, 254, it said it's 210. So if talk group ID 210 on our radio system PTTs. Sorry guys. Um, so if talk group ID uh, 210 PTTs on our radio system, it's also going to PTT demo 123 on our wave system and vice versa. When demo 123 PTTs on our wave system, it'll also PTT talk group ID 210, whatever talk group that is. Yeah. Um, cool. So that's about everything I needed to cover today. Um, it's been going through questions as we go. Um, if you've got any more, um, you can chuck those into the um, to the question section on, on uh, through the webinar. Okay. Um, All right. We'll just give you um, give you a couple uh, minutes to do uh, that. a minute while we just uh, got to move through back online in about one minute time. All right, guys, while we're waiting for David and for Fraser to come back to us, just a quick heads up. Um, the UV350, um, which is the rugged vehicle mounted unit, uh, we're in the process of getting those into stock. Um, so we hopefully will have some stock in hand um, shortly. If you guys do have a requirement for one of those or a couple of those or some of those, will you drop us? Um, a line and let us know that you have a requirement for some of those and give us an idea of, of how many you would you would look for um, just to give us an indication of how many we we should stick into stock as an initial stock holding um, and obviously we reckon that that UV350 should come standard with its with its microphone 
So we're going to provision each one of those C50s with a standard push to talk microphone, which makes them legal for use in a vehicle. The other thing is I've got operational um, in the training center here is a full fledged gateway um, onto the, onto a link capacity plus solution. So if anybody wants a demonstration of that, to see how it works and to listen to it, um, give me a chat and a shout and let's set it up and I'll, and I'll, I'll stick you onto it and you guys can listen to it and see what it sounds like. Um, the audio quality is superb. Um, the functionality and the selectivity is also really good. Um, and you can see then exactly how it works from the wave talk group straight across into a um, talk group on the radios. Um, my recommendation, if you guys are going to provision these and set them up, is use your talk, talk group naming of your radio system for your um, waves um, users that need to connect to that radio system. So there's no ambiguity. So when one of your users says, oh, go to um, engineering for argument's sake, it's called engineering. Um, and you just tie the two together. Keep the yep. questions coming, Thanks, guys. Yeah. So I think we're pretty much up to date on the questions. Okay. There's a couple more now. Okay. So uh, let me get started. So is there any way to export uh, billings to outside accounting systems? So um, you're not going to receive bills from Motorola uh, for any wave subscriptions. You'll receive those from ACE. So it'll just be this, I'm assuming it'll be the same format as you receive them from ACE um, for other bills. Yep. So um, potentially should be able to export from the, because if they view them in their account, potentially. Yeah, I know there's work happening on that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll look into that one to see what we can do, whether ACE receive a CSV format can share that on, but there's no native integration into things like Quicken. Okay, yeah. um, so let me make a, so we answered that one. Um, so, uh, so one question is, so, um, Someone's just clarifying whether or not they bill uh, their own customers. Uh, yes, so that's exactly how it works. Um, so I guess from from top down, we bill Ace. Ace bills you. You bill your customers. Yep. And we have found that some partners, instead of the the monthly model, just to uh, make this a, a bit simpler, they've gone to their customers and got a commitment of either a, a one year or a two year upfront. So if that's a um, something that you would like to do to simplify it and um, it, it's an option. Yeah. At, the, at the moment we don't have any, Motorola don't have any provisioning around any discounting for a, one or two years up front, but we are potentially looking at something around that. Uh, yeah, and looks like the last ones with LTE and Wi-Fi, will the TLK always prioritise Wi-Fi or will it do a QoS check and direct voice traffic through the best part? Believe it defaults to Wi-Fi. It's configurable. Which one your preference is? Okay. Um, does it do a QoS? We would have to. I don't know. Don't know on that point whether it actually does a sample of the um, the connection. Um, would need to look into that and ask that question of our development team. Yep. Um, so when a customer wants to add a, a number of users, um, so someone's asking whether or not uh, a customer is able to add their own licenses um, or whether or not they have to call you guys as their dealer. Uh, so with the way that the employees are set up, that's configurable. You can give customers the ability to log in to their own uh, portal and add licenses, um, which you in turn would be billed for and ACE would be billed for. Um, Just remember, guys, or, that if they're adding Talk 100s, they need to get them. So, yes, they could add a bring your own device, but they, they wouldn't be able to add a Talk 100 unless they had one to add. So, if they were going to add a Talk 100, they'd have to buy it from you first. Yeah. Um, so, it, it might come down to sort of how well you know your customer and what yeah. level of confidence you have with them. Yeah, how well you trust whether them. Whether you enable that on, on the portal for them to be able to add additional licenses. Yep. Uh, yep. 
and uh, how many Wi-Fi networks can the TLK hold? Uh, there is a reasonable limit, actually. Let me just flick over to uh, manage that. Three. Yeah, well, the priority list was three. Um, yeah, I believe the answer is three, but it is potentially higher, but some might not get any priority in that case. It might just be stored on the device. Um, <laughs> I think that's about everything. I think we're caught up on any questions. Um, yep, yeah. So thank you very much for uh, listening to us uh, talk about Wave PTX. Hopefully you got something out of it. I believe there will be a uh, yeah, follow-up email um, asking for feedback on the event. Um, so yeah, please fill that in and as to whether you've got any value or, or whether you think there's areas we could have improved on for this webinar, that would be appreciated. Um, and uh, Motorola are sort of fully committed to working with Ace on this and if any of you as Ace's uh, partners um, have some opportunities that may not sort of fit exactly in the, the Wave PTX model or um, there might need to be some special work done on on sort of certain areas or even pricing then then let us know we're, we're happy to sort of look at options to see um because we want this product to sort of grow and and we see ace as a, a key sort of channel and and, and you as ace's partners as a, a key uh, enabler for this product yeah so yeah any any follow-up questions or anything send those through to uh grant um and we can work together on, on getting you an answer on those Right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Guys, if there's no more questions, David and uh, and Fraser, thank you very much for your time and thanks for putting this together for us. We really appreciate your your expertise and your insights. Um, guys, just um, a quick one. I've got um, David and Fraser always available to answer questions if I don't know the answers to those, which may happen in this new product. Um, but we'll we'll find the answers to everything we need. Um, the latest one coming through is not so much Wave, but is radio services on the Lex L11 work with Bluetooth on the DP46014801? Not sure what the answer is to that, lads. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, uh, but if you just want to address that quickly. No. Yeah, so you can't use the Lex L11 as a sort of wireless microphone to your DP4801 radios like you can with some of the P25 radios. No, you can't. We have asked for that from the development team um, and there is a new um, reiteration or I suppose a new um, range of radios that may be released in the future, but we're a long way down the line and we have asked for that integration to be considered down the line, but at this point in time, that's definitely not available. Yeah. All right, folks, if there's All anything right. else, um, please contact me. Let me know if you need any assistance with anything. Um, David Fraser, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. And, um, yeah, no I think that's it. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Have a lovely afternoon. And uh, any questions, please get them through to me and um, have a chat to me. If you need to call me, you know what my number is. Give me a shout. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye.